is my joy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got just the thing. <laughs> You started as an actor, went into den, directing, then writing, yeah. is that correct? Is that right? Yeah, in that because I always wrote in one way or another, but yes, that's, that's the general order of. That's when people paid me. <laughs> <laughs> order of payments <laughs> basically. It's less of the order of finance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you say you always wrote, is that uh, right back to your childhood or? Um, I, yeah, I wrote not very, nothing any good. Mm. But, <laughs> It's all terrible. <laughs> but, no, but I write, it'll, yeah, I write quite, when everyone else has finished writing and put their pencils down and start looking at the window and still be going. So mm. I write quite long, lengthy stories, all of which were, I think, pretty much copied from or derived from television shows that I'd seen and stuff. So I'd write little Sherlock Holmes mysteries and yeah. things like that. And, um, and then, yeah, I think the theatre thing we were just talking before about how you fall into the, the acting and writing mm. theatre mm. thing, and I can honestly remember when the first thought formed, but I think it was going to the theatre for the first time and seeing an actual actor. Can you remember the play? Or? I can, and strangely enough, <laughs> you've got time for these lengthy anecdotes. <laughs> it was a production of um, Hamlet at Phillips Street Theatre with starring Luciana Martucci. Oh, yeah. And um, recently graduated from NIDA, as he was at the time. I think I was in like year 10 or something, and I threw popcorn at him. <gasps> And I met, I was teaching at the National recently, and I met Luciano again mm. and told him that. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't remember the actual popcorn incident, but I was an idiot, you know, I was just hanging around with other yeah. boys. And, but as I was throwing the popcorn, there was a sort of shy, slightly timid part of me, I think, that was looking and going, oh, right, so acting is something real, and the theatre is something real, and, you know, it's not movies which seem very distant, and, mm. but they happen somewhere else. I thought, oh, you could do that, you know. And mm. that's where that f- thought formed. So, going back to commercial files, mm. um, so it was one of the early, from my memory, one of the earliest commissions of Malthouse Theatre under Michael Cash and Stephen Armstrong. Yeah. Um, what was your relationship with them at the time? But how did that come about? Um, that's funny. That was an interesting time. Mm. It was. Um, 2006, I wrote a play called The Pitch, which was a little solo show. Yeah, yeah. From that. Um, Not so little. That it became... <laughs> It went quite well, and then Malthouse bought that show, and then I did another show also at La Mama, which Malthouse bought, which is yeah, China, China and, yeah. and they both toured through Malthouse and, and were produced by them. And as a result of that, they, they commissioned commercial funds in I think 2008. Mm-hmm. So my experience with um, so the, the Malthouse at that time was run by Michael Cantor, who was artistic director, and um, Stephen Armstrong, who was uh, titled an executive producer, but he was in a way a um, um, creative. Role, at least in terms of programming, mm. and, um, and an interesting guy too. I mean, he's a creative person, he's just not a practicing artist in that sense, but he's a sort of um, yeah, very interesting man, he played an autodidact kind of character, uh, quite um, on the skids in terms of what's what's around and stuff. He was very quick at rolling from one thing to another and, mm. and kind of collating and um, a, a group of people who could make that Malthouse vision go forward, I think. So they were looking for a mixture of things that were potentially viable. Um, commercially for want of a better word, but also things that push the boundaries a bit. Mm. Um, so I kind of, as a kind of unscrupulous, to, <laughs> as a, uh, what do you call it, unscrupulous uh, sort of um, opportunist. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that situation and went, hmm, so they want to be out here, but they also need something that an audience might enjoy. <laughs> I've got just the thing. Um, <laughs> so I wrote a play which was... Uh, um, yeah, based on the, the structure of it, is essentially a, a, a farce, mm-hmm. um, and it does all the things that farces do. So it, you know, has a very simple premise set in one location, um, characters coming in and out, time pressure, um, mistaken identity issues, etc., etc., and kind of resulting in a massive kind of climax of um, you know, <laughs> um, kind of disaster and collapsing and death. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but above and beyond that, it's a it's a it's a commercial fast that's set inside the set of a commercial fast. That's a play without a play, mm. um, which is a bit of a cheat on my part. I'm supposed to set it in a world that I know something about because that's pretty much all I've done in my life. Mm. And uh, and so I had chosen a, a work a workplace that I knew all the kind of silly intricacies of and foibles and insecurities and so on, mm. and glued that onto it. Uh, but above that, I think there's another thing in this play, which is that anxiety about aging, and that was really my primary kind of 
this. Uh, <laughs> still this. Ah, it's 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 gonna, it's gonna say, are you through that yet? Or? <laughs> no, he's still working on that. I think that's a full time job now. Yeah, it was, uh, sorry, I've just eaten my microphone. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought what, what better, better form to express the fear about time passing than a farce mm. with a kind of you know, impending uh, and disastrous conclusion because that's how my life feels. <laughs> <laughs> there was something about ageing, I think I, I thought, what's the best way to express this anxiety we're getting middle age about being surpassed, overlooked, yeah. um, having been yesterday's hero. Uh, being constantly confronted with images of highly successful and apparently lucky youthful people that seem to get everything that they want. Yes. Um, and, you, and not just in the theatre, in fact, probably less so in the theatre, um, but, uh, but certainly in, you know, in all commercial advertising, on television shows, everywhere you look, uh, when you go out on a Friday night, <laughs> you just see your generation and older people just seem to sort of vanish, you know, after yes. through the city and you think, where's everyone gone? Mm. And um, so, the, so the place about that and what Bill doesn't have or what that character doesn't have is wisdom I suppose because that is the one blessing of ageing mm. that you you learn more of course and you find out things about life that you could have possibly known when you were 20 um, but he doesn't have wisdom he just has desperation <laughs> so he, uh, he fights with this young kind of uber successful television actor for, to make his show work and they just cannot connect on any level really, and, or understand each other or make any real attempt to understand each other and they get locked in this battle of wills which ends up can I say what happens in the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets yeah. burnt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it dies, really. Uh, so it's like a little life of death that play, too. It's, about, it's a little journey through from, from his youth to his death, really, in kind of one hour and 15 minutes. It's interesting yeah. to hear you speak about the play with, with all of that uh, attached to it, because I think. Um, <laughs> because it seems so shallow. <laughs> No, I wasn't going to say that. But it is, it is something I would say uh, to you as a writer, and I've read a lot of your work mm. and seen a lot of your work, that um, uh, those kinds of very personal insights are, are, do tend to be quite uh, strongly buried mm-hmm. in, inside what you do. Mm. And they're, they're absolutely there, but they're not, they're not hard on sleeve in that way. No. And I'm just wondering, as you get older, as part of your ageing crisis, mm. do you think, or do you sense in your writing as it's going now that, 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 that that's going to get more buried or less? Do you think, is it something that might emerge more in, in later years, a, yeah. a, a more yeah. exposed version of that or, or yeah. not? Yeah, it's interesting, yeah, I'm kind of... Um, I think I'm actually writing a film at the moment. Mm. And, um, and you can't bury any stuff as successfully. And mm. I don't think theatre can skate along on a particular enjoyment of one particular form. It's a different experience in a way. Mm. Because it has those rambunctious kind of enjoyments of its own, particularly fast, of course. It's almost, it's a confection room. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you don't need to lie look with too much um, subtext because it's, it is its own text. But, um, but having worked in, having been writing film, I've realised that you can't, it's very hard to hide in a film, there's kind of almost nowhere to hide yeah. because the camera's such a great lie detector. Yeah. <laughs> Although it hasn't picked up a lot of the crap I've been doing. T- t- <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's an interesting question, which is, and I mean, I, I have, after having done all those shows and all those shows that I mentioned before, including commercial farce, I really, um, they really did, did just skate across the surface in terms of comedy. I think, I mean, there is stuff underneath and they're informed by that, of course. But, uh, but they are, they do just enjoy themselves being the way they are, those plays. Mm. Which is completely true. Which is fine, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and because there is the other stuff packed underneath, it, yeah, it, it sustains it's itself, I guess. Yeah. It's more just a yeah. personal question, really, yeah. I guess. No, and I, and, I think, and I think having done those plays, I don't feel like I want to do another play like that, I guess, is, one of, is the way to answer it. Not that I would never write a farce again, I would. But, um, but for the moment, I probably won't go back into that form. Mm. So the other thing I've been thinking about running is another solo show. It's another multiple character type playing thing, but I want to travel a bit deeper with it in terms of in, in terms of. So you're playing Catherine Zeta Jones and Michael Douglas. Both. <laughs> <laughs> or some sort of story where, because the other interesting thing about those plays actually is that they that they they certainly have plots, but all their plots are contained within an hour and fifteen minutes, so they're all real time yeah. hour and fifteen minutes, and that confines you to there's a limit to how far you can travel, you know. Um, but uh, of course fast allows you to travel further than most forms because it can be as ridiculous as you like but you can't travel much beyond that room or beyond time or into other relationships that are mentioned off stage or whatever 
I'd be interested in writing something outside of that form, you know, to be able to travel through time more and to be able to look at the antecedents of incidents and stuff like that and to find out why people are the way they are and so on. I suppose that is about psychologising motives and things like that, looking at why people are acting the way they are rather than just presenting them as formed times. Yeah.